Hello everyone, welcome back to Quick Coding Bytes. Today, we will be looking at recursive functions, specifically mathematical recursive functions, which are part of the topics tested in ACSL Mad section. Before we learn how to evaluate these recursive functions, let's first understand what they are. Recursive functions are functions which are defined in terms of themselves. When programming, these functions call themselves until a base condition is met. At that point, the function evaluates all the other function calls to determine the final answer. A recursive program is used for solving programs which can be broken down into subproblems of the same type, doing so until a base condition is met, whose answer is already known or can be evaluated by itself. An example of a recursive function would be the Fibonacci series. The series starts with the first two numbers, 0 and 1, and all the other numbers defined after it, so the nth number in the Fibonacci series would be the nth minus 1th term and the n minus 2th term, which is essentially the sum of the previous two numbers in the series. You could imagine a program which calculates the Fibonacci series. Um, for example, if we input 7 um, into the program, then the recursive function would look something like this. So uh, we would have the Fibonacci of 7 would be equal to what? Well, according to this rule, it would be the Fibonacci of 6 plus the, plus the Fibonacci of 5, which is, in turn, uh, the Fibonacci of 6 is equal to the Fibonacci of 5 plus the Fibonacci of 4, and the Fibonacci of 5 is equal to the Fibonacci of 4 plus the Fibonacci of and this would keep going on and on. Uh, this is just a brief example. But once once these calculations go down to the zeroth term and the first term, you would be able to see how uh, the entire function would then grow back onto itself as you would be able to plug in these values and determine the Fibonacci of these individual terms and build up until you found Fibonacci of 7. In the ACSL math section, we focus on the mathematical recursive functions rather than programming algorithms. So let's see how we can solve these mathematical recursive functions. So the first example we have over here has one variable. So we're told to find f of 12 given f of x is f of x minus 2 minus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 10 f of 2x minus 10 plus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 3 and less than 10, and x squared plus 5 if x is less than 3. So let's figure out what the solution to this problem is. So uh, we know that f of 12 uh, is the starting point of our function, so let's write that down. Well, what is f of 12 equal to? Well, we know 12 is greater than or equal to 10, so it is f of 12 minus 2, or f of 10 minus 3. So we know that this is the first section that we have to solve for. But let's figure out what, uh, that's not the only part of the solution. We need to determine what f of 10 is. So let's write f of 10 down. Well, what is f of 10 equal to? Well, f of 10 is uh, still greater than or equal to 10. So that's equal to f of 8 minus 3. Well, now let's figure out what f of 8 is. Well, let's write that down, f of 8. And f of 8 is between 3 and 10. So that would be 8 times 2, which is 16, minus 10, which is f of 6, um, plus 4. Well, what is f of 6 equal to? Well, f of 6 is, again, between these two bounds. So it's 12 minus 10, or f of 2. So f of 2 plus 4. Now let's determine what f of 2 is. Well, f of 2 is less than 3. And now we're finally able to collapse this recursive function as we have to square x and add 5. So f of 2 is uh, 4, or it's uh, 
4 plus 5, which is 9. And now we're able to collapse this equation. So what would this equal? Well, this would equal 9 plus 4, which is 13. Well, now we know if f of 6 is 13, well, that is 13 plus 4, which is 17. Um, we know f of a is 17 now, so f of 10 would be 17 minus 3, which is 14. And we know that f of 10 is 14, then f of 12 is 14 minus 3 for an answer of 11. So that's how you do recursive functions in the mathematical sense. You want to write down or the entire function call that would occur. And once you hit the base case, you go back through and plugging in the numbers as you go, go on and solve the entire problem. Now, let's attempt to do a two variable mathematical recursive function as this function has both an x and a y. So I'm gonna move this over to the side because we're gonna need a bit of space to work on this. And so we are gonna start with f of 12 comma seven. So f of 12 comma seven. I'm just gonna move it up here, make it bigger. And let's start. So f of 12 comma seven. Well, we clearly see that x is greater than y. So we have to follow this first rule. So it's f of, well, x minus 1, so 11, and y plus 2, so 7 plus 2, which is 9, and we're going to add 3 to it. And But what is f of 11 comma 9 equal to? Well, f of 11 comma 9 is equal to, well, again, x is greater than y, subtract 1 from x, so f of 10, and add 2 to y, so that's 11. Again, we're going to add 3 to it. Well, f of 10 comma 11, well here x is less than y, so you have to follow the second rule. So it's 2 times f of x plus 1, so f x plus 1 is 11, and y minus 1, which is 10, minus 5. Well we now we need to know what f of 11 comma 10 is, so f of 11 comma 10. Well that's equal to, again we're using this first rule over here, x minus 1, y plus 2. So that's f of 10, 12, plus 3. And now again, now we need to know what f of 10, 12 is. So f of 10, 12. Well, that's equal to, uh, we have to use the second rule. So 2 times x, f of x plus 1, y minus 1. So 2 times f of well, x plus 1, which is 11, y minus 1, which is 11 minus 5 and now it's f of 11 11 and we hit the space case over here where we don't have to call this function all over again we already we can determine the answer on the spot which is 11 squared so 11 times 11 plus y which is also 11 now we're ready to plug back in and solve our original problem so I'm going to move this, I guess, out of the way. Let's zoom out a bit. Let's move this up. I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's grab ourselves some more space. So we know f of 11, 11 is 132. Well, f of 10, 12 is then going to be 2 times 132, which is 264 minus 5, which is actually equal to 259. Now we know what f of 10, 12 is, so now let's figure out what f of 11, 10 is. Well, f of 11, 10 is going to be equal to 259 plus 3, which is equal to 262, whoops, plus 3 is equal to 262. Now we have to, again, we know that f of 10, 12 is 206, f of 11, 10, excuse me, is equal to 262. So f of 10, 11 is going to be equal to 2 times 262 uh, minus 5, which is equal to 519. And now 
we know what f of 10, 11 is, so now we can determine what f of 11, 9 is. Well, that's going to be 519 plus, whoops, 519 plus 3, which is equal to 522. And now we know what f of 11, 9 is, so we can determine what f of 12, 7 is, which is what our original problem was. And the answer to this is 522 plus 3 is 525. So now that's our final answer. So as you can see, the best method for solving these problems is to write down all the function calls, and then once you get to the base case, you start working your way back up until you get to your original function call. So that's pretty much it. That's how you can do these things. So stay tuned for more videos, and thank you for watching.